Welcome to part 5 video of module 6. So we have been discussing the storage infrastructure management. Now in this video let us resume our discussion. So describe the various components monitored in storage infrastructure. So the components we saw earlier are host networks and storage and um, the parameters of these components that have to be monitored are as accessibility capability I'm sorry capacity performance and security so uh, we will discuss each of the component how the parameters are to be monitored so the first component monitored is host okay and uh, in case of accessibility parameter um, so the explanation is quite simple if you go through um, its accessibility here. The accessibility of a host depends on the availability status of the hardware components and the software processes. So uh, the hardware components are HBS host bus adapters, okay, NICs, etc. and uh, various processes on the software side. Then capacity uh, parameter, how it is monitored is you need to monitor the file system utilization of the host. Then performance, that is host performance monitoring mainly involves that is um, the status check on the utilization of various resources. Then security parameter of a host uh, involves security monitoring on the servers, that is the tracking of the login failures, execution of unauthorized applications or softwares, etc. Okay, so that is all about the host. Next is the network component, how the parameters are looked into. First parameter, accessibility. Now in case of network, the storage networks need to be monitored for what to ensure proper communication between the server and the storage array. So in the network, you have mainly the server and the array. So the networks have to be uh, monitored in that aspect for the accessibility. Then um, next is uh, capacity parameter so the capacity monitoring in the storage network involves monitoring the availability of ports on a switch okay whether uh, the ports are available for the new servers that may be added on then performance parameter of a network uh, is used for in assessing individual component uh, performance and to identify network bottlenecks then we hear about link utilization metrics etc then security parameter of the network monitors um, uh, the information um, or unauthorized unauthorized changes to the configuration of the fabric okay it gives us such information then next um, component is the storage okay that is the storage array so accessibility um, that is uh, accessibility of the storage array should be monitored for the hardware and software side and um, the storage arrays are configured with redundant components that is the f uh, in case of failure the accessibility won't be affected for that purpose redundancy is provided okay then capacity parameter uh, capacity monitoring of the storage array enables administrator to respond to storage needs preemptively based on the capacity utilization so uh, you have to monitor the capacity of the storage array so that uh, when a new server or new capacity needs comes in um, preemption could be done so first of all we should monitor the capacity next performance um, um, parameter it says about um, the utilization uh, your response times cache utilization of the storage array okay uh, security parameter um, that we are concerned about the access control and security of data center etc okay of the storage array next let's discuss the alerts in monitoring so we need alert messages okay according to the uh, severity of the um, risk or uh, threat or whatever okay so alerting of events is integral part of monitoring and it keeps the administrators informed about the status of various components and processes okay so it is uh, it assigns the severity levels okay uh, and the types of alerts are like if it's an information um, the alert would provide 
useful information and does not require any administrator intervention. Examples are there. The morning alerts are there, which requires administrative intervention, that is, the file system becoming full, etc. Then fatal errors, which requires immediate attention. Okay, so that's alerting. Next, um, the storage infrastructure management activities. Okay, this is important. So uh, this is a figure we have seen earlier. Uh, that is the components involved in network. Um, the storage arrays the server okay so those, those are the key components and we have discussed these parameters plus a reporting parameter so these are coming under the management activities storage infrastructure management activities okay this dotted uh, rectangle so uh, it's just um, the a storage infrastructure management activities categorized into five availability management capacity management performance management security management and reporting so availability management it's um, it's very simple it's just a repetition it's very easy to understand uh, the goals of availability requirement is to ensure availability of all components and services okay um, so and the examples of availability management tasks are installing that is to uh, provide availability okay uh, we need uh, what is normally done is uh, we have installing two or more hpas per server uh, multipathing software cluster server configuring the raid uh, etc now capacity management that is to ensure adequate availability of resources based on the service level requirements and um, uh, we find that it involves uh, optimization of capacity based on the cost and future needs and um, storage provisioning is done then enforcing capacity quota for the users that is fi providing a fixed amount of space for uh, depending upon the users okay so you have a quota for each users so these all come under the capacity management activities next performance management uh, the goal is to ensure optimal operational efficiency of all components and the key activities are fine-tuning of performance enhancement activities on the server okay that is uh, like volume configuration database design etc example of performance management activities are to configure multiple parts appropriate rate type cache configuration etc then security management uh, activities include managing user accounts configuring zoning and loan masking so all these would um, help security we had seen this earlier okay uh, zoning that is uh, to avoid um, unauthorized users uh, to come in okay so in a particular zone only those who are configured within the zone can access so we have come across all those things earlier then another security management for that we have configuring encryption services firewalls antivirus auditing and so on next is uh, reporting uh, reporting on storage infrastructure involves keeping track and gathering information from various components and uh, reports normally that are used here are capacity planning report configuration asset management reports performance reports charge back report okay now uh, those are the activities now we'll see an example two examples mainly the storage management example now in the case of storage allocation to a new server okay uh, so a figure is given you have a server sand and a storage array so in the figure you have uh, like uh, volume management uh, file system management database management okay and uh, in volume management uh, you can see the volume allocated to the server volume group created in the next step file system configured database configured okay um, then these are the tasks that comes in the server and uh, allocation at the SAN allocate volumes to the server zoning HBAs front end uh, ports st at the storage array you have this okay just go through it so these are the main tasks and um, 
the figure illustrates the activities performed on a server SAN and storage array while allocating storage to a new server. And considering the deployment of, a, as I said, an RDBMS server, a new one, to the existing a non-virtualized storage infrastructure. Now we are considering the example of a non-virtual environment. Okay, the administrator here would need to install and configure HBAs and device drivers on the server before it is connected to the SAM. Okay, that is at the server end. As the next step, administrator would perform zoning, as you can see very clearly in the figure. Okay, um, then the server discovers the loons assigned to it. Uh, by a bus rescan process or a server reboot then on the application side um, the next side the administrator starts would be installation of database okay or um, logical volumes of file systems then SAN level again a virtual SAN can be configured to transfer data between the server and the storage array if you need a virtual environment and at the storage side administrators need to create thin loons okay and uh, uh, assign them to the storage array front endpoints okay that is logical units are being assigned and how they are uh, uh, linked to the storage array front end ports then at the server side the hypervisors in case of virtual environment hypervisors uh, discovers assigned loons and so on so that is the example First example next is uh, a case of a charge back report okay uh, this is a storage management example uh, in reporting so it's just a simple example here you can see an engineering one server and payroll one server these are application servers and two switches and uh, you have production storage arrays that is of the uh, source volume one and source volume two and they are a uh, local replica of volume 1 and volume 2 so this is a this is b and at the remote storage array you have the remote replica volume 1 and remote replica volume 2 as uh, c okay uh, so the charge back report would give an indication of the uh, cost okay uh, per raw uh, uh, data storage in gbs okay cost in dollars is given okay the final uh, column as you can see so in the case of payroll one and engineering one application now normally in gb you have 100 and 200 as the storage and in the production storage uh, 200 250 and local replica 100 200 and the remote rep replica say some values so the total storage of the raw data would be the sum of production raw, local and the remote and uh, uh, you can calculate the charge back cost by just if it is supposing five dollars per raw data uh, it is just five into the total storage raw data and you'll get this value okay for each so uh, the example explores the storage infrastructure management tasks necessary to create a charge back report okay so you can just go through it and um, the report shows the information for two applications payroll one and an engineering one so uh, next topic is um, storage infrastructure management in virtualized environment okay in a virtual environment uh, how is the storage management being done so uh, virtualization technology um, has uh, its uh, activities at the storage la layer, network layer, and at the compute layer. So, at the storage layer, storage virtualization helps in dynamic migration of data. Okay, so um, this virtualization, having virtualization at the storage level or layer, uh, would uh, help in the data migrated both within and across the data centers without any downtime. Okay then uh, virtualization at the network layer um, that virtualization here would help in um, you know a reconfiguration of the nodes done very quickly without any physical changes that is the benefit of having virtualization at the network layer then at the compute layer compute virtualization helps the host deployment reconfiguration and migration easier 
than the physical environment you have some idea about the virtualization concept as in module one so what are the benefits of having this virtualization as given here then uh, another topic for this session i would like to discuss uh, storage um, multi-tenancy so multi-tenant you know uh, tenant is like uh, just like um, the uh, people uh, residing on rent okay you have a landlord and um, that's the owner and you have others uh, tenants who uh, reside in the infrastructure given by the landlord okay so there is a similar idea here now storage multi-tenancy so you have a person or um, a system giving you um, that is the landlord actually giving you um, a storage facility so the ones that are accessing are the multiple tenants so multiple tenants sharing the same resources provide provided by a single resource provider that is the landlord is called multi-tenancy so so that is the main idea here and there are four pillars of multi-tenancy uh, there should be secure separation between um, the tenants and the environment then uh, there are four basic requirements here you can see that is the separation of data address space separation authentication and name service separation then separation of data access now uh, if a tenant is there uh, using the resources of the landlord everything should be separately done okay so that is what is given there then service assurance um, it provides uh, service levels that can be unique to each tenant availability high availability ensures a resilient architecture for uh, fault uh, fault tolerance and redundancy so all that is an inevitable um, feature okay then management this includes providing um, on the landlord to manage the infrastructure uh, at the same time delegating management responsibilities to the tenants okay so all these are possible in um, storage multi-tenancy so with this i would like to conclude this video thank you